This call is now being All right, so let's get going. Let's start off with a circle. That's a good start. Uh, let's talk about degrees and radians first of all. So obviously 360 degrees in a full circle. How many radians in a full circle, Bidai? Pi. pi. Two pi. Two pi. That's more like it. Yeah. Or two pi radians, yes, in a full circle. Okay, so that's the same thing. So you could write that decimal form, 6.28, et etc. et cetera, if you want. Okay. Some of the more basic formulas that we deal with, uh, starting off, is length of an arc and area of a sector. Now, both these usually use... Mm, good question. Yeah, so pi is its approximation is 3.4. Uh, yeah, so it's just double that and I've rounded it. Yeah, okay, so always remember that. Uh, so, of course, pi, if you want to go back to pi, is a ratio. What's the ratio between the die? Don't use pi in the ratio. Not um, ratios, ratio. Oh, you want me to convert it from pi? No, I want you to tell me what pi is a ratio of. What two measurements is it a ratio of? Uh, pi is a ratio of um, half a circle. Oh, I like it, you know? Uh, it has something to do with radius and diameter, yes, and the circle, obviously. So, I won't let you struggle with it for too long because we're recording this, but the, any circle in the world's diameter, if you multiply it by pi, you will get its circumference, and the same is in opposite. So any circumference or any distance around the outside of a circle in the world, if you divide it by pi. So to say that, every single circle in the world from the bottom of your water bottle to the earth, its circumference is 3.145159 times bigger than its diameter. So it's a ratio between their circumference and diameter. Now, of course, usually you'll find circumference by doing pi times the diameter, and that is kind of the ratio in itself. If you just rearrange that, circumference divided by diameter is pi, and that's the ratio. So in every circle in the world, and it's based off that ratio. A little bit um, similar to, not similar, but sine, cos, and tan are also just ratios, because with this particular angle, you're dealing with similar triangles from then on. It's just the reason why I like Okay. We'll come back to sine, cos, and tan in a minute. With these two uh, formulas are given in the formula booklet. So the length of an arc is, what was it, L, uh, L is equal to theta times R, and the area is equal to a half of a sector is a half theta times R squared. Of course, that's coming from, we see the, the relationship between this formula and the area of a circle. Or perhaps not. Explain to me the relationship between this and the area of a circle, which of course is pi or squared. So pi has been slice, slice of pizza. But can you tell me how that would be derived from pi or squared? Yeah, of course, but can you see how, well, a half theta has, is being replaced by pi. If you multiply both sides by 2, theta is equal to 2 pi, and that's coming back to your full circle, and it's a fraction of your full circle. So it's just the area formula, and yes, as Badai, you said, it is just what fraction of the full circle it is, yeah. Okay, so that's our sector. This length of an arc... That's this, the length of an arc is this thing here. That bit I've just shaded here. That's the length of the arc, the highlighted bit there. Okay, and that's uh, theta times the radius. 
Does that make sense? The times the radius. I probably shouldn't spend too much time on this, but why why does it make sense? Because the circumference will always be one radius radius away from the center. No, that's not why. Think back to the circumference. The circumference is the right word, but not its distance to the center. How do we get the circumference of a circle? Two pi r. Okay, so once again, 2 pi is being replaced by the angle, and the angle goes up to 2 pi, that's another the maximum angle. So if you have a quarter of the circle, it's a quarter of 2 pi. Yeah, so that's, that's where that formula comes from. Okay, so you can apply that. So let's say we have a 10 centimeters uh, in length here, and the arc length is 20 centimeters. Let's say that's our problem. And we want to find theta. How would we, could you find theta? What, what would be my step here? We use the plugging tensor radius. Into which formula? So we've got length of an arc and area of a sector. So you're using the length of an arc? Uh, use area of a sector because the length of the arc. Are we trying to find the area of the entire? We are, no, we're just trying to find uh, the measure of angle theta. So I, I haven't asked to find the length or the area. I've you given you. So length of the arc, yes. Yeah. So the length of the arc in this case, so you're using your L is equal to theta times the radius. And we will find theta based off this. L, that is the length of the arc, is 20. Theta is, is unknown. Radius is times 10. So theta in this case would be 2, and it's 10 divided by, or 20 divided by 10. Okay. Approximation of the many degrees, would that be a reflex, an acute, an obtuse angle? Two radians. Uh, uh, like radius. Obtuse. Okay, so. Yeah, so 3.14 radians would be 180 degrees, wouldn't it? Yeah, so then it's obtuse. Yeah, and think of half of 3.14. That's going to be less than two anyway, half of 3.14, around 1.56 or something like that. So it's definitely an obtuse angle, yeah. Okay, so my diagram is rather incorrect, of course, because that 20 would have to be twice as long and it starts to make more sense then. So you can use those formulas and I'm sure you can. So let's, in general, between degrees and radians, radians are used a lot more in HL maths than degrees. And you're probably noticing that if you do past paper questions or, uh, or the practice tests or anything like that. Uh, degrees are usually used for, uh, Sine, co uh, sine rule, cosine rule, and area of, a, area of a triangle questions or bearings questions. Those kind of questions use degrees, uh, whereas radians. radians um, radius and like the cosine yep, yeah, as long as you, it's just to set your calculator for the question, is a good idea. But you'll realize, you should realize if your answer makes no sense. If the question gives you in degrees and your calculator is in radians, there's, there's, it'll be way off the mark uh, with regards to your answer. So that's only just for paper two, anyway. So when you apply the area of sector, your one has to always be in radians? Unless you convert the degrees to radians manually? Yeah, you can convert it manually and then convert it back if you want. Just usually whatever the question gives you. And I'm just saying in general, the way they ask questions is they tend to, and this is not a definite rule, they just tend to use radians mostly in HL. And only for those uh, more visual bearings type questions would they use uh, degrees. Now you'll see, I've put some extra practice questions up and you'll see that there are degrees in some of them. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, well, might as well do the cosine rule and the sine rule and stuff. Uh, so can you draw that uh, chart that's like the four degrees and the other like that? Yes, I'll come to that. Don't worry, I won't leave that out. All right, so the sine rule, you can spell it with an E if you want. Uh, cosine rule. Uh, sine rule is A over sine A, so opsis, um, sine B and C over sine C, etc. So, uh, not etc., that's the end of it. Um, it's just saying that the ratio of a side to its sine of an angle is uh, their end ratio to, to, for all of them. And if you think about that, that kind of makes sense. Well, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, Perhaps, so first of all, the sine rule would only be applied to non-right angle triangles. You can apply it to right
right angle triangles, but you can only you can't apply sine, cos, and tan, Sakatoa things, opposite and adjacent to non right angle triangles. So here's our non right angle triangle. Let's just call this A and this uh, uh, its opposite A. So uh, would you be able to uh, notice that the ratio sine in general, uh, as angles get bigger in sine, uh, the opposite side gets bigger. And if you think about that with your right angle Sakatoa, which I'm not going to, I presume sine, cos, and tan is, is not a major issue for you. But if you have just, let's say, a 45 degree angle, so this is 45 degrees, so it's sticking degrees, uh, it's a ratio of one to one. So it'd be one, one, and this would also be 45. So the sine, I'm just looking at this side. Now, if I increased one, is this angle going to get bigger or smaller? Keeping this one the same. Isn't this angle, if I increase then had it of length two, let's say, you can clearly see that this angle is getting bigger. Yeah. So that's what the sine rule is based off. The length of the side is increasing proportionally to the size of the angle. So that's why they have it as a ratio like that. So A over sine A, if little a here is bigger, the length is bigger, the angle is going to be bigger. And B over sine B and so on. C over sine C. Okay, so the opposites. And the cosine rule uses opposites as well. So if you're labeling it, C is opposites, the big C and stuff like that. So when do we use the sine rule? There's no hard, steady, fast rule. And perhaps in SL maths, it might be an easier one to say you always use. But the way I think about it, the way it's set up, you will only use a chunk of it. You'll only use, yeah, two at a time. And you're looking for two sides and two angles. If you're equipped with two sides and two angles, uh, you would use the uh, sine rule. Now, I presume you know how to use it, but this is when you use it. So two side, two angles. The cosine rule, then, on the other hand, I would use if I had three sides and only one angle marked, including the one that you don't know. So, for instance, if I had a, a triangle like this, and this is a new triangle, uh, and I had, let's say, this was... Uh, 33 degrees and this is 8 and this is uh, 7. Now at this stage there's not enough to use either of these because I've only got two sides and one angle. So this is not enough to use either of them. I need to know which uh, the question is going to ask. The first question will ask for what is the measure of angle A here, for example. Which will I use, but I think, to find the measure of angle A? Sign rule, yes, because you've got two For angles, sure. two sides. Yes. The thing is, um, if you were to label A, B, and C, we can't really apply everything. We have A sign A, so like A represents sign A. Well, I remember. Eight eight and then seven is. Yeah, so. No, you see. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's a good question. I couldn't do it. Because they're not this yeah, okay, yeah, I didn't label that very well. You'd have to find this side first and then use the sign rule to find. You'd have to find this side because that's the only information you have. Once you found this side, you can use this and this over this and this. Yes, you're right, sorry. Badly labeled triangle, but yeah, you noticed. Uh, so the cosine rule you should be okay using. It, it is written twice in your, you don't obviously need to take this down. This is in your former booklet. It's written like this, A, B, cosine C, as long as C and the angle C and the side C are opposite each other, you're good. Or you, if you're looking to find, this is the way it's written in your formula book list. If you're looking to find the angle, make it the subject. C squared all over 2AB. So that's the cosine rule. And there's also the area of a triangle. And I presume that this is this, you're okay with this, because this came up a lot in year, previous years, uh, AB sine C. So that's the two sides, so you'd use this side and this side and the angle in between to use the area of the triangle if you can find that. So that should all be... Well, we use that as based on time for right triangles? Or can you yeah, you can. Yeah, if it's a right angle triangle, definitely. Yeah, half times based on time. Yeah, no problem. And this formula, I'm not going to derive any of these. I think I spent some time when we went through this first deriving some of these formulas. I'm not going to go into that because that's not going to come up. Nigel looks perplexed. So, well, and there, those answers are definitely right because they're the IB mark scheme and they were exam questions. So, 
Okay. Oh, that's why I'm recording. These are these formulas are all in your formula booklets, so you do not need to learn them all. Uh, that's a good idea. I think. We're not quite at the stage yet where the exams are done on devices. They will. It will come, but uh, you got to get used to the pen and paper. You know. Okay. So, sir, none of the papers got cancelled, right? No, you, you, you're the only subject that has the same amount of content as every other year. Oh. <laughs> Mike has, uh, has asked the question I would like to ask, and I have asked, and I haven't got a satisfactory answer. So, I don't know. I don't know why. I can see why they didn't do it last year, because you can... Uh, well, actually, it's probably the same reason this year. Schools do different things first. For instance, Malika's old school had done statistics when we did calculus. So therefore, if they took statistics off the paper, what have they done? Um, it's the new math thingy. Yeah. Yeah. In a way, so because it's a totally new exam, they have a clean slate in a way. You know, so they can. But that's not a reason to be stuck in an exam. Anyway, we won't we worry about that maybe after the exam on Friday. Okay, unit circle, our old friend. Uh, okay, first of all, we will remember, I, I wasn't going to, just in case we ever forget. Opposite hypotenuse and uh, adjacent. If I'm talking about angle A here, so sine is the opposite divided. Sine of angle A is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of angle A is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, and of course the tan of angle A. Good old Sakato. I, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I just do it just in case because I will be referring to it now. Right, so that's not the unit circle, obviously, that's um, uh, more trig ratios. Uh, and you can, uh, for the same reason that sine, is that a hand up? Yeah. Uh, if it says no calc, you can't. I think there's, yeah, I think it. Oh, then maybe you can, yeah. Oh, that might be a mistake for me, sorry. Um, lost my train of thought. Anyway, half and half. But yeah, by the way, Friday, um, are you just giving us 90 minutes after school or something? Yeah. Is that okay? Like after school, like 3.30 p.m., like the mm -hmm. lunchtime? Lunchtime, after lunch. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's the plan. I was going to give it Monday, but then I forgot about the change in weeks. Okay, so, oh yeah, I remember what I was going to say now. Uh, same way with um, the, remember we just looked at sine and then as the opposite side got larger and larger, the angle here at A gets bigger and bigger. Uh, cosine works the opposite way. Uh, because it's the one alongside the angle, the adjacent side, it deals with its ratio versus the hypotenuse. As the adjacent side gets longer and longer, if you think about the adjacent side getting bigger and bigger compared to the hypotenuse, this is actually going to flatten the triangle a bit, isn't it, and decrease the angle. So for cosine, it works the opposite to sine. Direct, and it's actually directly opposite. Anyway, there's um, Ms. Robinson, when she, she does this, she, uh, she teaches the magic triangles, which I've alluded to one of them already, uh, just to make sure I get this right. There's two magic triangles. One of them is an isosceles triangle, so that'd be pi over four or 45 degrees in each corner. And uh, the length one and one, which we looked at on the other page anyway. Uh, what would this length be? I'm pretty sure it was something like square root two over three. Yeah, it's root two, yeah. So that's, yeah. No, it's not, no. 
And this one lets you use our degrees because I know Badai likes to use degrees. Uh, root three, so this opposite side, so this is Pythagoras, of course, one squared plus root three squared is four, square root of four is two. And then if you have these two triangles, you can use your sine, cos, and tan ratios to form that table that I was talking to you, uh, all of us about. The, the, the table, which is what I do, is I just do pi over, so I do increasing of size, pi over three, and then I do sine, cos, tan, down the side, and then I do increase, remember sine increases, so one, two, three, Cosine decreases, three, two, one. And then I put in my square roots after these two. And they're all divided by two. And it's just those three values. If you don't do zero or one. Or well, you would. They're logical. We'll come to that when we actually draw the circle. And we look at zero and one. Uh, and then uh, to get the tan ratio, you just look at sine over cos. So one over root three for tan root two over two for 45 degrees, which is obviously one, and root three over one for pi over three, which is root three. Now that's, uh, that's how I would do it. You can also include pi over two. So sine is getting closer and closer to its largest possible ratio, which is one, and cos is getting smaller and smaller towards its smallest possible ratio zero so you could do one two three one but it doesn't really make sense and tan of course is yeah okay because it's going to be one divided by zero which we know is not defined as operation okay so these are very useful especially at the end of trig identity questions where we have to think about all of our angles that could possibly be. All right. Unit circle. All right. So the unit circle is based off a circle of radius one. So that means this point here would be the point one zero, wouldn't it? This point would be minus one zero. This is zero one. And down here then would be uh, zero minus one. Okay. And I, Degrees, I oh, no, sorry, radians wise, what would be the radians here? So we always start here. This is our starting point for unit circle. And we bring this dot all the way around and we can go around many times. So Badai, what's the degrees here is when we start? Obviously it's zero. zero. And then when we hit uh, 12 o'clock, it's pi over, pi over two, 90 degrees, of course. And then it's pi, isn't it? Three pi over two. And then we come back and that's also two pi. Okay, am I off screen? I am on now. Okay. So that's this dot tracing around here. Any particular point on that unit circle then would have a sine coordinate and a cos coordinate, which we went into a lot of detail with before Malaika was with us and how that was, we proved a bit, bit of it. But we won't go into that now. Can you, uh, Bidai, can you tell me what's the coordinate here in terms of if I just have an angle uh, theta? What's that point there? Sine, cosine, or tan? What? Sine, cosine, or tan? Yeah. Is that? Well, that's like going to be... Zero. No, no, I haven't told you what theta is. You can probably guess about where it is, but... Oh, it'll be... Oh, sorry, 45, sorry. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's that whatever the cause of the angle in is, is referring to the x-axis, if you will. So that would be the distance oh. here. You form your right angle triangle, yes, yeah, so that's cause, it's directly related to cause. That height would be the sine of the angle. It's like x, y, yes. Yeah. And that's where you can create this thing. So it won't create, and you can have all your points that are in your table. Here. Yeah, so that's, that's the other thing. There's a lot of learning off of uh, what quadrant, what particular angle is positive or negative compared to sine or cos. Isn't there? You learn, you learn that. But you can clearly see if you just look at the x and y axis, the point that sine or cos would be. Cos is going to be negative anywhere here because 
all these points are, are, are sorry, positive anywhere in this quadrant, because all these points are going to be referring to a positive point along this x-axis. But as soon as it crosses this barrier, the cause of the the cause of the angle is going to be negative because it's so it's going to be over here. And then then cause is negative again because it's still over here, and then it's here, so it's uh, positive again. Whereas sine sine refers to the y-axis, so sine is positive all at these angles, at these angles, these angles, all still positive, so you can still get a, and as soon as it hits pi, they're negative, because it's below. Yeah, we did that before. Tan then, why is tan positive, but I, in the first and third quadrants? Because we mentioned between cosine and sine. Yeah. It's, it's positive in the third one, because they're both negative. Yes, exactly, so you're dividing two negatives, so sine theta divided by cos theta in the third quadrant would make tan positive. Sweet. All right. Let's move along. So there's plenty of you need that diagram. There's better, plenty of better descriptions online for that and diagrams that are better than this. And that's just, and we did a less full lesson on that before. Okay. Let's talk about trig identities. So what you're trying to build up really, oh, that's spelled wrong. What you're trying to build up really is all these weapons that you go in and, and try and solve the problems within the exam. The trig is probably the most weapon-laden. Uh, it's a bit like the start, start of calculus when you got your quotient rule, your project rule, and chain rule, and all that. Trig has loads of these identities, and then loads of ratios, and then uh, compound angles, and, uh, and if it brings it to the trig function, they're all just weapons, and all of them are listed in your formula booklet. So, your formula booklet is your friend, especially for any trig questions, so do not forget that. Uh, if, do you have one of those, Malika? Formula booklet? Didn't give you one? Okay, I'll print one off uh, and give it to you before the exam on Friday. Uh, yeah, so your formula booklet is your friend. In your formula booklet, there's many trig identities. Uh, let's just, this one is in there, I don't, but you obviously know it. Uh, one of the main first ones is called the Pythagorean identity, which is this one. And does that make sense? Does that make sense? Why that would be one? Yes, yeah, because of the unit circle. Yeah, so in your unit circle, that distance is cos theta, that distance is sine theta, and the unit, the radius is always one, of course, so it's cos squared well, percent. Right? No, it's Pythagoras' theorem. That's why it's called the Pythagorean identity. Because if I square this side and add this side squared, it should equal one because the radius of the unit circle, if we go back, was one, wasn't it? Yeah. Our old radius here is one all the way around. All the way around, it's one. It's a circle, yeah. So that radius won't change. So that first, so these are obviously kind of base cases. There are double lines, they're kind of single. Uh, yeah, I'll come back to uh, reciprocals in a second. The double angle formulas then are also given and we can probably create some of these if we really wanted to, we won't. Sine two theta is two sine theta cos theta. Okay. So twice theta then would be two sine theta cos theta. And you can prove these, and we have proved them in other videos, so I'm not going to go back to that. Maybe I'll do one or two of them. Uh, cos squared theta minus sine squared. Well, they're all, they're all working for both, really. As compared to... Well, these are... This, if you look at the three from for cos... This is one, okay? Let's just say this is one. They each have one at this stage. And all the other ones are doing is using this. So what's cos squared? It's one minus sine squared, yeah? yeah? Okay, so replace that. One minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And that is one minus two sine squared theta. It's the same one. It's the same one. It's just a rearrangement. All I've done is use the Pythagorean identity to change it a little bit. So this is the only one, really. These are the only two. But all I'm doing is, so, and I can do the same to find the other one. Because what's from this 
what was that cos squared? What's sine squared? It's one minus cos squared. So, okay, here's my original cos squared theta minus one minus cos squared based off the original Pythagorean. And then we get, well, I'm going to put uh, minus minus cos squared. So it's going to be one, uh, it's going to be minus one plus two cos squared theta, isn't it? And it's written in the form of the book, there's two cos squared theta minus one. So really, these two can be derived on the day of the exam, but they give it to you in the form of the book. There's, it's just using the identity. So there is no extra ones for cause. It's just manipulation. Yeah. And on Friday, is it only this unit, or is it also the differential sum, also the unit, like the number and all the other units? No, no, just trigonometry, pure trig. No, no, it's not a, a cumulative exam. Okay, so there are uh, some identities, and they're given to you in the formula book. So, example question. If sine theta is four-fifths, find cos theta and tan theta. So this has to be a gimmick. You have to know how to do this straight away. And here's the question. How do you do this straight away? Yeah. Method one, draw. If you have sine theta, you can draw a sketch of what that ratio would look like in a triangle moment. So let's make your right angle triangle, call that theta, the opposite side is going to be four, and the hypotenuse is going to be five. And as soon as you have that, you can use Pythagoras, can't you? That's method one. Five squared minus four squared. Five squared. Yeah, so 25 take away uh, 16 is nine, isn't it? So that's going to be three. So therefore, cos theta and cos theta is then the adjacent side over 5, which is 3 fifths, and tan theta is uh, uh, 4 over 3. Yeah. Okay? Now notice, of course, and we know this when we do our uh, functions, that sine and cos won't go beyond 1, will they? In ratio form. Sine and cos won't, shouldn't go beyond 1, or should they? Is it okay to sign that the ratio of sine? No, I'm saying the value for sine of sine, in this case, sine is 4 fifths, so that would be 0 0.8. Would it be okay for sine theta to be 1.2? Is that okay? No. Why not? No, because the hypotenuse should be longer than the Yeah, the hypotenuse always has to be longer, and that's that would be illegal. Is it okay for tan to be more than that? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. No, the more the more acute the, 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 your your angle you're basing it off, the larger the tan value you're gonna be. And so much so, and that what makes the tan graph go way up. The cuter the acuter and acuter the angle, the larger the ratio up to no, okay. the, up to infinity, isn't it? With this small numerator with a big denominator, right? If the angle is acute? Uh, it would be smaller, actually. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're right. It's a little bit wrong. Yeah, so it doesn't go over one side. Oh, it would. It could. Oh, on the other end. Oh, the other end is. It's obtuse. Yeah. yeah. Well, not if it's obtuse, but if it's... No. 45 is the, is the turning point. Yeah. So if it's a super acute angle, it's going to be one way. And if it's super towards 90 degrees, it's going to be the other way. Just think about it. How steep, how steep must this be for theta to be near 90 degrees? The opposite side must be absolutely massive, wasn't it, for that to be near 90 degrees. So that's why, uh, that's, that's the one I was saying, not the cure. The more closer to 90 degrees it is, it tends to infinity, and the closer to acute angle zero it is, it tends to uh, uh, negative. So that's why tan has this little shape. Which triangle? Which triangle? The one where um, tan would be uh, increasing. Uh, yeah, sure. So this is the way a tan looks, and 45 degrees is kind of the turning point where tan is at perfectly at uh, one. But if it, yeah, so if you want, just think about it. If that side's really large, but I, this side's really small, 
the angle here is going to be quite big, isn't it? Yeah, that theta is nearly 90 degrees. It's getting closer and closer, closer and closer until it's undefined and not a triangle anymore. And that's why tan of 90 degrees is zero. Or not zero, undefined, because it's one divided by... Because that would be one, and this would be zero. And one divided by zero. Okay. So you're able to do that now. I was going to show you method two, which you could get just using uh, this formula. Cos squared is equal to sine squared. So you just square sine, and then it's just a... And get square root then back and you'll still get it you can use the identity as well if you want so there's two methods to doing that all right so since we're talking about graphs there is the, the sketch of the tan graph it has asymptotes here what would these asymptotes be what angles would it be at in radians uh, maybe. Pi over two. which one pi over two is as it gets this one so this is at pi over two and this is at zero, is it? This is approaching pi over two. So now it's getting larger, and you can see that this side is getting is going to get bigger and bigger compared to the ratio compared to this side. To make it almost ninety degrees, it's going to be, have to be quite large. And then, so okay, so that's tan. But generally, the questions they ask you are on sine and cos functions. So those are the general. The general, uh, so this is trig functions then and graphs. Okay, so what's the general form again? Can anyone, does anyone know it? With the letters, y is equal to, for sine, sorry. Uh, just like a, b, sine. Oh, yeah, so a sine b x plus c. x minus c, yeah, uh, plus d. Uh, d or, yeah, you, we can use different letters here. Uh, okay, uh, so yeah, it's kind of, in a way, it, the, all these things, so the general function for quadratic is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, and you use that in the quadratic formula. The general form of a line is y is equal to mx plus c, so they all have little bits of information in them that determine them from each other. What is a then? It's the amplitude. Yes. Okay. D then? Uh, yeah, vertical shift or yeah, translation. Oh, I'll just use shift. Uh, B then is what? Horizontal squidge. Oh, it's a wavelength, right? <laughs> the period of the function. Horizontal squidge. Uh, yeah, okay, that, it makes sense. I just never heard it called that. Yeah, that's what I've written there. And, and C then is the horizontal shift, just this. Wait, sir, how do you find B? How do you find B? You just told me. <laughs> to use 2 pi over B. So if that. Well, yeah, let's have a Let's draw one. So I, had, I have one ready to go. Y is equal to 3 sine. 2 times x minus pi over 4 plus 4. And they might ask you to sketch something like that. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Okay, so you have a go at sketching that, and then I'll have a go. I thought C has to be an integer. C has to be what? C has to be an integer. Why? Because you can't shift the horizontally. What is the horizontal axis, Padai? It is radians. Well, degrees or radians, depending on which one. You wouldn't have it in degrees because that would be 360 of them. So that's why we do radians 2 pi is our period of the function. It starts at zero, right? It's what? Like if C was equal to zero. C is the horizontal shift, C is the horizontal shift, yeah. I wouldn't start there, though. With the horizontal shift, no, I'd start with my boundaries. So you, you can do you, like you're doing it, but if you just want to watch me do it, that's fine. Okay, so first, I, well, I might even draw my x and y axis. First thing, I would look at the vertical vertical shift, which is uh, d. I'm going to look at it, and alongside, I'm going to look at a amplitude. I'm going to look at both of those at the same time. I'm going to get those figures so I can draw my scale, my y-axis scale. So the vertical shift in this case 
Uh, it's up four, isn't it? Because of the plus four here at the end. Oh, you're off the screen. It's up four from where it normally is. Sine is normally, uh, sine normally sits at uh, the middle part. If you, if vertical shift, talk about the middle part of it. Normally sits at, uh, at zero. Now the middle part of it's going to be moved up to four. So the midline is going to be at four. Yeah, so then that's when I go back to the amplitude. It, the, the, it was one, and now it's three times more than three. So the amplitude is from, do I, never make the mistake of saying that from here to here would be six. No, from here to here is three, and here to here is also a distance of three. So what scale I'm going to put in, I know it doesn't drop below zero straight away, because it, this goes from one up to seven, with four in the middle. Amplitude is just like halfway. Amplitude's half, yeah, yeah. So what I would do is then I would put in a little dotted line at one, a little dotted line at four, and a little dotted line at seven. And that would be my starting point. That'd be my first two things I look at. Uh, next thing I would look at the, the, the other two bits of information, the period and the, uh, the, uh, the horizontal shift. So next, I'll look at the, the period. So I still haven't drawn anything here. Well, that's what we need to figure out. So for B, the period, you, we know that 2 pi over B equals whatever number that, that was. And I think you're right to say it's, it's going to be, what was the number? 2? I can't even see. Yes, 2. So 2 pi over B equals, equals uh, 2. So pi, all right. Isn't it? No? Is B, yeah. No, it's the same thing. You're getting the same thing. You're get, trying to. I'm saying two pi over two is five. Oh, sorry. What did I write? Oh, yes. Sorry, B equals. Oh, D is D is equal to like the the. So the period is two pi over two, which is pi. You would have got pi the other way, but uh, yeah. So the period is pi. So it repeats every pi. Now that's where you can start putting your, let's do two pi on this. And I possibly wouldn't do this until you figure out the shift, but two pi, and that means if it repeats every pi, how often, how often are the stages gonna be at? Uh, max, min, mid? There's two maximums. So let's say it starts at pi, whereas let's say it's the normal sine function and it starts at uh, the normal sine function goes zero, highest point, pi over two, middle is pi, lowest point is three pi over two, and then back. So the max is going to be pi over four, mm. and then it's going to happen again. Mm. Okay, yeah. yeah, so you're right. It's going to happen every, every pi over four. So that could be my scale. I'm far enough away that I can take that off. You guys are close together, but... Okay, so our scale for this, I'm still not putting it, I'm going to just put this, so pi over 2, just for what I need. Uh, you don't need to take this much, uh, sorry, yeah, 3 pi over 4, that's a 4 there. Okay, and so on, that's 5 pi over 4, and that is going to be, uh, oh, whoops, not very well scaled, it's 3 pi over 2 then, and that final one is going to be whatever that is, 7 pi over 4, and then we get 2 pi. Okay, so I predict we're going to almost fit... We should fit two periods in here, but we're not because it's a shift. So where's the start point? If it used to be zero, so it used to be zero, it's where? No, no, the start. So the sine graph you normally starts at zero. That's. Oh yeah, but where do I start it on the x-axis? So this, it's somewhere on this line. Yes, because it's shifted pi over four, and it's the opposite sign, so minus pi over four. So here's our start point. Isn't this supposed to be set, like seven pi over two and seven pi over four? Aren't this supposed to be switched? That's a three pi over two. Okay, so that is my start point of the period. That's where it starts now. So the next one is going to be at its high point, isn't it? Goes up. Sine function goes up. 
back down the next so that's why i split it up because i'm ready to put where these dots are back up again high point again down low points and i think a low point here as well if that and then then i join okay and i'm yes i fit pretty much uh two that join that would join with that in a way, and so that's two periods. In there. So that's how I would do it. So to recap, so I see I did it's shifted uh, from zero to pi over four start point. That's off screen. That's what I would do for the start. Point. B. Yes. <laughs> I confused myself. Uh, then the, the normal period anyway is 2 pi, yeah? In this case, it's 2 pi divided by whatever b was, 2. Sorry, I wrote it wrong the first time. 2 pi divided by 2, because you, you 2 pi over b is the period. I said it. Yeah, if B is not there, the period of the function, if there's, if there's nothing here in front of X, yeah. period of the function is 2 pi. No, if there's nothing there for B, the period of the function is 2 pi. Oh, and then, uh, you move the, um, I understand how you got the periods, but I'm, I'm a bit confused with the domain. Like how you, why it started here at the bottom? Uh, why it started here at the bottom? Well, it started here. So remember, sign you need to know your sine function in general. Starts at zero and goes from one to minus one. Yeah. Now it will pi to pi. This is the general shape. It will hit its maximum at 90 degrees and then go down. You can turn on oh, is the other air conditioner. I'll turn that on if you're getting warm. Okay, this is the general function, but it starts at zero normally, the sine function. Whereas the cosine function starts at one normally, and then goes down. That, they're your starting points. Zero for sine normally, cosine starts at the max. Or if you want to think about it, sine starts in the middle of its function, in the middle of its period and cosine starts at the maximum. Whatever the maximum is cosine, so that's the general. You'll have to practice those. You're not going to, you're going to have to do these yourself and you'll get the hang of them. They're not. Oh, so, so it's translated to power over four, which is like a quarter of a period. Right? Yeah, a quarter of that period. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Alright, room two over two is is uh, forty five degrees. Okay. So I know we do the top two quadrants into the positive. Yeah. And then we do one eighty minus pi well pi minus pi over six. Okay. So yeah. So uh sine, as you said, pi over 6 is a half, so that's the one that works. So pi over 6, I would call that, as many words, reference angle, perhaps you could use. So you want to know, between 0 and 2 pi, where the sine hit the height of a half, is basically what you're trying to do. Two places, you know, because it's the y-axis, you know it's going to hit here and here, and that's pi over 6, and this one is what? Like, what's this angle? Well, this angle is pi over 6, but what angle brings me to there? So that's starting starting here and moving around to there. Sorry, that, that's pi over 6, yeah. So what is it? Which is? Two pi over 6? Pi minus pi over 6. Is five pi over six. Five pi over six. So my answer, because sine is positive, it'll be above, and these are the two places here and here, and they're both the same height. Well, that's where we're going next. Yeah, don't worry. Pi over six and five pi over six. Sweet. Now. Sine 2x is equal to negative a half. Same domain or range. Okay, so you're going to elongate this. So you're going to say that is now 4 pi. So you go around the circle. So if I have my unit circle, where it equals negative a half, it's going to be down here, isn't it? And down here. On my first pass around, Okay, I know, what's my reference angle? Still pi over 6. On my first pass around, this is going to be pi plus pi over 6, which is 7 pi over 6, I think. Uh, here, this is my reference, so that's going to be pi over 6. So 2 pi would be 12 pi over 6, that's 11 pi over 6. 11, that's 11 pi over 6. And then I need to go around for the second time, because I just elongated this. Do, 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 do. So I can add 2 pi to this, or you can work it out. Uh, I think adding 2 pi would be 12 pi over 6. So that would be 19 pi over 6 the second time around. And adding another 12 pi over 6 is 23 pi over 6. Tell me my next step then, Malika. Divide everything by 2. Divide everything by 2. So my answers are, so far, the answers for 2x are uh, 7 pi over 6 11 pi over 6, oh, I did a double, uh, 19 pi over 6, yeah, and 23 pi over 6. But of course, I do not want those, I just want the answer for x, not its double. So I divide everything by 2, so these, these all become over 12. So 7 pi over 12 would be the first one, and so on. You can divide those yourself if you have four answers. Okay, next one then, we'll do one more these sign ones, and then we'll get to where this would be the answer to a question rather than just the question. Yeah, so what's sine x over 2 then is equal to 1 over root 2, for example? Move the 2 to the other side, explain. That won't multiply the angle by 2, that will multiply the sine of the angle by 2. Yeah, yeah I'd yeah, do that. That's different than multiplying it by 2, because then that would change this ratio. Yeah, that's the same as root 2 over 2, so that's 45 degrees, so that's pi over 4 is my reference. So, nothing about the, what about our range here? Yeah. I know, but just in case, in case it was something different, just showing what you do. Yes, but I.
Yeah, yeah. Well, only look, if you're dividing a fraction that has the same denominator as the other fraction, it's just the numerators that you're dividing then. One over root three. How's that what? Which ones? That's not undefined. Oh, sorry, that's pi over two. Pi over three is what you said, isn't it? No, you said pi over six. One divided by root three would be. Oh, so it's just going to be one over root three. That's, that's, uh, that's pi over three, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So pi over four is one answer here. So my two, are you saying like my two final answers are pi over four and? Okay, uh, so this is going to be then what? What's that? What's this one? Uh, Wouldn't this be four pi over four? One uh, four pi four pi over four is here, so it's going to be three pi over four, isn't it? Because it's pi take away pi over four. So this is four pi over four, which is the same as pi. It's just fractions. Then multiply by 2. So that would be pi over 2. And 3 pi over 2. Yes, correct. Okay, so that's, they, they usually come at the end of a solving, but they, there's, uh, yeah, you might have to go around a few times and it might be more difficult than that, but. How do you get um, 5 equals 1 over 2 half? What do you do to get? What do you do to get the question? I wrote the question. It was a question. I want X. I want to find. It. It's just another question. It's three questions. First question was this. Second question. Yeah. One over root two uh, equals, or if I just multiply it by its third, so third you would have done in year. Well. So 1 times root 2 is root 2, and root 2 times root 2 is just 2. It's root 2 squared. So root 2 over 2. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, they're interchangeable. 1 over root 2 technically isn't... Uh, it, it's, it's like having a decimal in the denominator, and it's generally not a good idea, but it's fine. Either one is fine. You have to be able to switch. You just recognize that's the same as root 2 over 2. Just proved it. Just, just here. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. What time is it? Okay. All right. Continuing on. Laptop is repeating. All right. So, I forget where I was going to go next. Oh yes. So identities. More identities. There are more in your uh, booklet. Hmm. Yeah, get into that. Can uh, they could there could be a show that question? Show that like this thing equals this thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are there any other questions that they would be like involved in? Uh, ooh. at this stage, like, solving the solving ones. They could be in there later on. They'll come into. Uh, uh, calculus. Hmm? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and find one. Is there one of those in the questions, right, here? Huh? In the questions, is there any ones with uh, secant and cosecant and cos? Uh, which one are you doing? Oh, the thing that I sent. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Sorry, I can check. Uh, just on my maths, I assigned you the same exam question, just my maths slightly different. And why is that due? The my maths is due on Friday, the other ones is voluntary. But I'd recommend doing them all. I don't think there's any second. No, there's not, no. no. It comes, uh, yeah. Yeah, mostly show that and solving. I'll try and find a solving one for you in a minute. All right. Double angle identities, which we did prove uh, in class before, but so I'm just going to write them. Uh, this one, tan 
two theta uses the singular tan theta, and that's the, the beauty of this then, because you only need to know the angle theta, not double the angle. Uh, and the compound, so that's to go with sine two theta, cos two theta from earlier. Uh, the compound angle, so compound putting angles together. Uh, I'm only going to write one of them, but you can, uh, it must be this type of one, if you remember this. It separates them. So that's one example. Do notice in the formula book list, which I don't have a copy of to show on the screen, or I do. In the formula booklet, uh, there's this little tricky number here, uh, and you see it in uh, all of these. The minus plus plus minus. In cosine, for example, it goes plus minus, and then the formula goes minus plus. So that means if, the, if you use the top one, top sign, if you're adding them, you use the minus one here. And the same for tan is uh, the one on top, it sticks with it. Is. So just be careful of the signs there because they're marks you could throw away in the exam. All right, let's continue on our merry way. So there's the compound angles. Uh, also, you have uh, your reciprocals, which is sec is one over cos, which you should know. Uh, cosecant is 1 over sine, and cot is 1 over tan. Yeah. Uh, you, you, uh, no, I'm not going to do it, but the, the secant line and the, and the circle and the triangle, it all comes back to the unit circle of why it's, it's a secant line to the circle, so secant. I'm not going to go into it now. It's not... Rather than perhaps after the exam, I'll show you how that works, why the name makes sense. But we uh, don't need to do that now. Yeah, yeah, it's just is what it is. And same, same with arc. Arc sine is just sine, our old friend, sine inverse of an angle. Yeah, just arc sine. That's just how it is. Um, you don't want to know? Oh. Well, uh, HL maths won't work like that for a lot of things, but for this, you don't need to know where the name came from. But yes, you will have to know its applications, yeah. <laughs> I'm just happy to know. It is what it is, says you. All right, so let's see, can I find a question that I have done already here for you? I'm not going to get into those inverse, the arc sine uh, functions. There's a lot of explaining behind something that doesn't come up very often. It's just that it's, remember the ranges are, the ranges are, are limited. And what happens if there's an arc sine Oh, panic. Ha, <laughs> no, panic. Thanks. I'll do the hardest one. We, I think we did before. Where is it? Oh, well, that's what we get when we, yeah. We rely too much on the calculator, I suppose, yeah. Uh, How are you even supposed to do it? It's just inverse, uh, inverse. Where is the... Uh, inverse as if you treat it like a, like a function, and then you put the y, and that's yeah. That's one way of treating it as the inverse. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now let's look at the, let's look at this question. We had this before. Uh, you probably don't remember how to do it. Uh, I don't have a question. I think it was something like. Let me get the actual question so I don't mess it up. It's got arc tan in it. I don't know if you remember that. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, H. Twelve trigonometry. It was in your practice test, wasn't it? It was in the practice test. The arctan. 
No, it wasn't. Sorry, I gave it a different question. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Um, why revision summative practice homework? It was in a homework, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So it was just the question was very simple. Find arc tan one seventh plus two arc tan one third. I know that's the question. <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. So we won't panic. We won't panic. We'll try and break it down into its bits and try and see what we can do. Okay, what does this mean? What, what, what's, what does arctan mean in general? Yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to do this on a different page because I won't have a fruit. All right, let's just talk about tan to the negative one of uh, what well, we just had it. One over root two. No, I know, it's different. I'm, I'm just building up to the question. T tell me about what that means. That's equal to an angle, isn't it? Yes. Can't you get that? What angle is that? Root 2 over 2. Remember, we just did it a second ago. Oh, sorry. 1 over root... Oh, yes, tan, sorry. Arc tan. 1 over root 3. 60 degrees. 60 degrees. You sure? So one root two, is that not the other one? Like 30, 30 degrees. All right, so it gave me an angle. All right. Well, then I know what the angle is. Yeah, so theta is, what is theta? Pi over six? Yes. Woohoo, done. That's not how it works, because tan one over root three is pi over six. So it's the same for the Tan one over root three. Tan of one over root three. Oh, is this? Pi over six. Tan of one over root three is pi over six. Yes. So why? Why is it the same? Like no, 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 no. That's no. So that's really the side length. What? No, because if you do tan over tan of one over root three divided by two is side length. That suggests that one over root three is an angle, not a ratio. One over root three is a teeny tiny angle, and it would so, not equal an angle. So tan pi over six is equal to one over root three, meaning that tan one over root three is equal to pi over six. Tan one over root three does not equal. To, that's not the way inverse works. So the, the thing is. No, up here, this would say the tan of theta equals one over root three. What is theta? Theta then is pi over six. Well, what you could say is that you multiplied both sides by tan. So I'm going to write it again. Theta equals arc tan. I'll write arc tan. Arc tan one over root three. If I multiply both sides by tan, tan theta equals tan times arc tan. 1 over root 3. Now, that's tan times tan inverse, which is cancelling each other out. It's different than reciprocal. Yeah, because these are ratios of angles, it doesn't exactly follow algebra rules, but tan and arctan will cancel each other out if they're written in a row. Tan and its inverse gives you back to the angle. If you tan an angle and then you inverse tan an angle, you come back to the angle. So tan theta is 1 over root 3. So what did my original thing say? Let's go back. Theta equals tan inverse 1 over root 3. An angle has a ratio of 1 over root 3. Tan inverse is when you always were looking to find the angle, wasn't it? When you were given side lengths, yeah? The answer to this theta is pi over 6 here, yes. So tan, regular tan, mm. pi over 6 is equal to 1 over root 
the inverse of the inverse root one over so okay so you said tan pi over six is equal to root three so if i got the inverse tan of both sides yeah so then tan so arc tan one over three equals minus six that a root yeah 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 so then if i do that for example cosine of cosine of pi over four would equal two yeah so then the arc cos of root two over two is equal to exactly that's exactly it. That's how they do it. Yeah. yeah. They have that relationship. Yeah. OK. So that is the starting point that we, so that came up in one of the questions, didn't it, in uh, the practice exam, the one with the area, where we had to come back. And the practice exam, it was something like uh, alpha equals four times arc sine uh, pi over three or something like that, or something like that, or one third. Arc sine one third wouldn't have been pi over three. One third. Remember, it was that, and you had to. Yeah, we're going to come to that now. Okay. We should be more equipped to solve this right now. So I'm going to switch page and just start with a fresh page and solve it now. So arc tan one seventh plus two arc tan one third. So the first question I'm going to ask is. Is this the same angle we're trying to add? No, oh, two different angles. Okay. Because they're two different ratios for tan. It wouldn't make sense. Okay. But are we in agreement that this is an angle? And this is dealing with an angle as well. Okay. So for earlier on, we said, for instance, uh, let's call them A and B. So A is equal to arc tan. One seven. There is some angle that equals arc tan one seven. So in other words, the tan of angle A, as you said, Malika, would be one seventh. Okay. And let's call this B. B is equal to, now I know there's a two there, but I'm going to come back to that in a second. Arc tan, because it's two times whatever tan. Is. Arc tan one third. So tan of B, as you we just discovered, is one third. For now, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna uh, ignore the two. Yeah. Right. So that what this is saying then is alpha. We can do you, you do the triangle, yeah. Is it compound angle? Compound angle? But we don't need to. Yeah, we're gonna use compound. We're gonna use compound angle. So it's alpha plus twi twice twice yeah, beta. No, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, yeah, yeah. There's a double for tan as well in your formal book. So I'll just slow down for a second. Double angle for tan, yeah. Tan two theta there at the end. Okay. This was the one we gave in the last question, right? This was one of the. Yeah, the diff yeah, the last question of a homework one day. That was the difficult question. I don't know, I didn't even get it from the day. I just might have got it, I'm not sure. Yeah, so hopefully you have. So hopefully the, 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 the exam questions that you can have a look at after. Once I finish this example, you can start to do them. So get them open, get your manager back open and get them loaded up while the like is gone. Yeah, what are we doing after trigonometry? Hmm? It's a good question. It should be, it should be integration calculus, but I haven't 100% uh, decided yet. Are we doing integration after this? The plan is to do finish calculus then, yeah. come back to calculus. But Malaika wasn't supposed to join the class, so she has not done she can do calculus. She can catch up on her I might have to do a crash course of calculus for a lesson or two of the review in the last one. She did a bit of calculus in year 11 as well. Yeah, she should have. And you did integration in year 11, didn't you? You did. I think we barely started, but I did not remember. Okay. Yeah, so that's the plan. I'll probably stick to it. It's just I'll have to make sure that Malika isn't lost once we start. But integration is not. You can almost do it at the top and on its own, so it should be. Oh, 
done this question before, so I'm not going to 